Don't you just love being able to sit on the sidelines, watching chaos unfold, and knowing it doesn't really affect you in the slightest? That is how I feel about the Xbox situation. The fact that all their games, they might be going third party. Now, we've known this for a few days. The rumours have circulated. But I wanted to talk about today where everything is kind of at. There's been a few little updates here and there. More rumours, more sort of murmurs going all over the place. And for me, it doesn't really affect my day-to-day -day gaming. I mainly play on PC. I dabble a bit on the Nintendo Switch. But I don't care about Xbox. I don't own one. One, but I don't own a PS5 either, so I'm sure it'll be unfortunate to some. I'm not a console warrior. I don't really have a, a horse in the race. But it's still very interesting, because no matter what happens here, when the dust settles, it's probably going to change gaming to some degree. I mean, Microsoft could end up being one of the biggest third-party publishers, after all is said and done. And they own some RPG studios. People are talking about Avowed. There's other studios like In Exile. So I'm always going to keen to find out what is happening and to kind of sum up where things are at and then we'll look at some more rumours, this post kind of broke things down. So one of the earliest clues, and these clues are important because there's a lot of copers out there. After the news kind of first broke, people went into panic mode, especially the Xbox fanboys going, oh no, we're going to have to sell out consoles, what are we going to do? I can't be a Sony Pony, they got really concerned, really worried. But then some of the Xbox insiders will call them, the people on Twitter, you've probably seen a few names around, they started to walk back the idea that Xbox was going fully third party. I will say these insiders, if you look into some details, most of them are really just part of the Xbox ambassador program, which essentially means they've been given a sticker that says they're an Xbox sucker. They're kind of that kid in school who was always getting those stickers from the teacher and people were just kind of laughing at them. No one really respected them. So I don't think being an Xbox ambassador means they're actually getting any real insider information. They're basically reacting to all of the same news, the same rumours, and they're probably just trying to put a positive spin on it. So they still look good in the eyes of Microsoft. They're probably worried if these rumours end up being unfounded, or at least it's not as bad as first thought, they're probably concerned they're going to be put in the, the naughty corner. They're not going to be given all the goodies from Xbox anymore. So that's all I really see. I don't think they've got any other information that we don't already have. They're just trying to be careful. And if we look at the rumours that we know about so far, some very good examples, even from months ago, Marvel's Blade. So there was even talk back then about how there were no Game Pass Xbox logos across the Blade trailer. And that's where some of those murmurs started. People were going, is this exclusive? If it is, why aren't you sort of selling that? Why aren't you marketing it? Now we kind of know. It's, it's almost confirmed at least some games are going third party. The real question now to really answer is, are you putting every single game on the PS5, for instance, day one? Is that what's sort of happening long term, or is it just going to be select games? I think the genie's out of the bottle when it comes to any games going over. It's almost a certainty that titles like Hi-Fi Rush are getting ported. Probably PS5, Switch as well, it looks like. And if we go down here, there was talk, for instance, of a job listing for the next Halo, and it was going to be developed for all platforms. Now, you could put that down to maybe a mistype or someone just considered PC and Xbox to be basically all the platforms. You're not going to specify every single one in a job listing, you would think. By itself, it probably means nothing, but it's just all these clues. It starts to add up and just give more credibility. And if Halo is going to PS5, I mean, you'd think that'd be basically everything. Why would you put Halo on the PS5, but then you'd be stingy with, say, Gears of War 6? You wouldn't. You would just put them all on other platforms, other consoles. Exclusives are going to be dead. That would be the writing on the wall. There's also the internal civil war within Microsoft that gets brought up where some of the execs, 
They see Microsoft as a software company, first and foremost. Why are we focusing on pushing hardware and sort of forcing people into that ecosystem? It's kind of like Windows. The aim with Windows is you can basically put it on any computer that's not a Mac. You've got Microsoft going everywhere. You're not sort of limiting people. You don't have to buy the Xbox PC or any nonsense like that. You get Windows on any laptop, any computer, basically. So maybe some of the execs see this the same way. They've got all these studios. They've got Activision Blizzard now. Why are we limiting where we're putting these games? They should be going on everything. But then the other side of that coin, why it's a civil war, is you might have the Phil Spencers who had this vision all these years ago where Xbox was going to be great. And that's how we've ended up with all the memes of, this is going to be Xbox's year, 2024, this will be it. It doesn't happen. I don't know, 2025, just wait. We know it's been a decade of disappointment, but this is going to be it. It's all going to happen. It never does. There was also other things like Bethesda and Game Pass. So I believe when Bethesda were bought out, as soon as the deal was finalized, basically every Bethesda game went straight to Game Pass and you could just sub, play all their games, you didn't have to buy them. With Activision Blizzard, that has not happened. There was obviously the long wait with the lawsuits or the court proceedings, whatever. That all went on and then the sale was finalized. Microsoft do own Activision Blizzard they're getting the proceeds from the games now. However, it's been crickets on the Game Pass front. There's been some talk about it, I think, but you can't actually just play all the Activision Blizzard games on Game Pass. The Call of Duties, for instance, Modern Warfare 3, the, the latest dud. You can't get it on Game Pass. You've got to spend 70 bucks. You've got to waste all of your money. So it is a little bit strange how Bethesda games just went straight there and it wasn't the case for the Activision ones. And does that suggest a change in direction that was happening even before this. There's all this talk, and again, it's kind of the copers who are like, it's just a consideration at the moment. They're not definitely doing it. Well, obviously something was going on months ago because it's not like you put the games on there and then pulled them. You hesitated, you waited, now people are wondering. So it seems like this $70 billion investment for Activision, maybe that's where things kind of shifted. There was a change in the waters because maybe everyone was committed to Phil Spencer's vision of let's grow Xbox, let's make it a direct competitor to PlayStation over the years, we'll maybe bring people over and we'll be the most wanted console. But maybe after spending $70 billion, the execs got worried and they thought, you know what? It's going to take decades to get the investment back. We're not going to risk it. Phil, let's be real. It's been 10 years. He seems like a clown. Maybe we can't listen to him anymore. Maybe we've got to shift directions. And this is the start of that. Now, there have been other little clues over the last few days. So an interesting one, some sort of Microsoft director, executive. Basically, he updated his LinkedIn and it started here down the bottom. So he basically updated his job title and he mentioned that Xbox content, game content, includes Xbox Game Studios, Activision, Blizzard, ZeniMax, and Bethesda across PC, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and mobile. The portfolio range was going to be across all of those platforms. But then people sort of caught on to it and he hastily changed it and removed the mention of platforms there. Now, once again, by itself, this doesn't mean a whole lot. It could literally mean just like a hi-fi rush, maybe Sea of Thieves, a live service game going there, but not necessarily Microsoft is now definitely third party and that's it. This doesn't mean that. However, it again seems strange that the person changed it like they were concerned and maybe they just want to make sure they're not the one who people are pointing fingers at. Oh, you blamed it. This is why Xbox is now in the toilet because fans see this and panic and sell their Xbox. Oh, no. I mean, it could just be one person doing damage control for themselves. It may not mean anything. But again, just these little clues that keep adding up. And it, it just seems like the damage may have been done. Even if Phil Spencer comes out and says, no, 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 there's just been this huge overreaction. We're committed to Xbox. It's the future. We're just going to put a game or two on the PS5 because we care about gamers being able to play anywhere. That's our philosophy. If they try and spin it, which they will, they're not going to come out and say, do not buy an Xbox. Are you, are you stupid? Why would you buy an Xbox? We're putting all our games on PS5. They're obviously not going to do that because right now they're making some money 
from all those third-party sales of games. I know they've sort of breeded an ecosystem of don't buy games, subscribe to Game Pass. But anyone who does buy a game, they're getting 30%. They can't just have that dry up overnight, even if it is a slow shift away from Xbox console sales. And maybe in a general two, they don't really compete in the traditional console market. That may happen, but it just can't happen overnight for them. They'll be in big trouble if that is the case. So whatever they kind of say... I would be inclined not to believe them, and I think a lot of the fans have probably lost uh, a fair bit of trust if you had that for a corporation like this in the first place. I do reckon a lot of people will start to move away. For instance, if you own an Xbox and a PS5, even if you like your Xbox more, you're probably going to be thinking, maybe I'll buy that next third-party game on PS5 because I'm a bit more confident it's going to be around in 5, 10 years. So I'm not going to have to re-buy all these games if I want to keep everything in the one place. There was also this just total coat post. Now, I've seen a little bit of this. So basically, someone says, I still wonder why the hell is Microsoft waiting a week? Now, this is on Reset Era. A lot of copers on there. You sort of get banned for criticizing pretty much any of the main platforms, PlayStation or Xbox. People just ban, 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 get out the ban hammer. So it's a bit sad. But this person says, the reason they're waiting a week, option one, to let us stew... Option two, option B, to get their statement straight. It's got to be one of those options. Part of me is still hoping it's a good reveal. Now, this is where it gets infinite cope, where this person actually thinks Phil is out there to announce good news. It's not damage control. It's just, it's all a big coincidence. In a week's time, he's coming out to tell you, hey guys, there's going to be a new Xbox soon where we're absolutely committed and here's five games that we've kept secret that we're releasing in the next couple of months. This person reckons it's all going to be okay. This press conference, it's totally damage control. There's obviously some sort of leaker within Microsoft, probably one of the people who doesn't want this to happen. I mentioned that civil war inside. It's like some people want to go third party, some of them don't. It seems like the whole announcement was meant to happen later, and they do it on their own terms, probably try and frame it in some way where Xbox fans don't realize they've been duped and Microsoft are giving up on them, basically. But now they've had to rush this announcement because of this huge panic and everything going on. So the idea it's going to be a good reveal, maybe if you live in deluded Microsoft world where Phil Spencer isn't an incompetent hack, maybe then you could frame it as good news. But let's be real, it's not going to be good. It's at best, they're going to not lose all their customers, basically. That's probably their aim at this point. Now, there was this one, the whole Microsoft Game Pass debacle, which you may have seen. Essentially, what happened is there was an advertisement, I think, on GameSpot. They put out a post for this, something like that. And it basically says, join us for Xbox Day plus explore the benefits of Microsoft Game Pass. Not Xbox Game Pass, Microsoft Game Pass. So that raised some concern. Are they rebranding? Are they going to sort of start to move away from the Xbox name because it's not really seen as a success? And maybe if they want to put this out on other platforms, having the Xbox name there might just be a bit weird, having sort of a, a competitor service on your platform. So they might be trying to reframe it. So down the track, it's a potential option to get potentially a Microsoft Game Pass onto the Switch, onto the PS5 and so on. I've seen people say that will never happen. Why would they allow Game Pass on these services? I don't think it would happen as is, but I could definitely see a world where Microsoft is able just to have their exclusive games, and I mean their first party titles, the Call of Duties, everything else from Blizzard, their other studios, and that's all that is in the Game Pass bundle. So it's not like random games like GTA 5 are going to be part of Game Pass and they'll put that on the Switch. I, I don't think that's going to happen. However, it could just be their games because I believe that is the case with the Ubisoft Plus. I think EA have a similar service. So why couldn't Microsoft do it if there was no longer an issue of, hey, we don't want to have our competitors' services on our platform? Well, if they're a third-party publisher, it would no longer longer matter so maybe it will happen this has been somewhat debunked I suppose because we can see here one of the Xbox insiders said just to put the fire out before everyone starts screaming I'm told GameSpot just came up with Microsoft Game Pass themselves the brand is still Xbox Game Pass no plan changes right now now again I believe this is one of those people who's just an ambassador they might know people at Microsoft but they're not specifically getting leaked information so you never really know if this person's just doing their own damage control 
or if it's 100% true. Maybe it isn't true, but it kind of makes sense. I think people believe this because rebranding, if you're moving away from the console, would kind of make sense. And even though Microsoft Game Pass just sounds super corporate, I don't think the company has that sort of self-awareness to go, no one wants to hear Microsoft Game Pass. That's not cool at all. And I say that because Microsoft have kind of failed sometimes with getting their products out to the general public, outside of Windows, obviously, which is clearly a juggernaut. But I'm kind of talking about just other products they've got out to the general public. Microsoft, insanely successful company, trillions of dollars. But it is really because a lot of the business-to-business products, like Microsoft Azure, Office 365, the sort of stuff you see at work, but you don't engage with as much just in your day-to-day leisure, your entertainment needs. However, they have had products like the Windows Phone, the Zune, if you can remember that, if you're that old. And you just remember those as being total failures. I remember a joke from a TV show where someone needs to get a song in a hurry and he asks his friend, hey, can you get that song? And the other character goes, yes, so I'll go and get my Zune. Just kidding, I'll go and get my iPod. And it's a big joke because the Zune is a joke. Everyone saw it as a total flop. And then there's Mixer 2, the competitor to Twitch, another streaming service that people have probably forgotten about. Microsoft haven't had a lot of luck in that space. Xbox is probably one of the, I guess, items that they sell to the general public that has done decently. It's had some decent successes with the 360, not so great since then. And maybe it just is that the executives have had enough Phil Spencer, it's been his passion project, but the rest are not willing to let the Xbox just sink into the red for the next 30 years as they slowly build up and try and make their money back from the Activision Blizzard purchase. Maybe that's stopping. I've heard murmurs that Microsoft may have seen something in the Activision Blizzard accounts, and maybe they saw PCs making humongous amounts of money. PS5s, it's huge. If we leave this all on Xbox... We just can't do that. We're leaving that much money on the table. Again, I just find this entertaining. I'm very curious to see what Phil Spencer comes up with, how he manages to sort of excuse this, the PR nonsense, to try and sell it to fans. It's always a bit of a laugh. We'll see if this is a disaster or if they can save it somehow. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.